What is up my friends and welcome back to Hobble Creates. My name is Hobble and in the last episode we built this little machine behind us which will automatically process all of the goodies that we are getting from our tunnel ball. So if you did miss that episode then be sure to check that out. But today my friends we are going to be automating some farming. So if you are new here then be sure to hit that subscribe button and remember to leave a like. And as always chapters down below so you can skip forward, skip back, whatever your heart desires. So when it comes to farming, we've got two options. Option one is doing exactly the same as what we've done over here with our tree farm. All we need to do is swap out our saws for harvesters, and that would be it. But since I've already shown you how to make one of these machines over here, today we're going to be doing something different. Much like the tree farm, we're going to keep this within one chunk. The main reason being if this chunk unloads and this one is still loaded, the machine's still running, it has a chance to break and it's it's not fun so we're going to keep it simple we're going to keep it within one chunk and if you did want to scale this up you would literally just need to scale it up vertically <laughs> or down you could go down as well if you wanted to so with our farm today we're going to be automating wheat carrots potato sugarcane beetroot and sweet berries and we're going to be using mine cards much like we did with our tunnel ball we're going to be building a minecart contraption that is going to harvest everything for us and send it off into storage so since we know where our chunk is we're going to come to the far corner and we're going to go one two and three and on this third block we're going to come back a couple of blocks and we're just going to pop down a powered rail and I'll explain a little bit later why we're actually building on the outside of our chunk. But on top of that powered rail, we're going to pop down a cart assembler. We're going to take our wrench, go to the side, and we're going to just scroll down to say lock rotation. We don't want anything going wrong here. Then with some super glue in our offhand, we're going to come to the top of our cart assembler. We're going to pop down a radial chassis, and then we're going to take some linear chassis, and we're going to run this the entire length of our chunk. However, on the very last block, we're just going to put down a temporary block. That's going to make gluing up a little bit easier. Now make sure you unequip your super glue because behind you we're going to pop down some more temporary blocks. However, we don't want these glued anywhere. Then around the front of the machine, we're going to take some mechanical harvesters and we're going to pop it on those temporary blocks that we placed behind. Then we're going to grab our super glue. We're going to come to our very first mechanical harvester. We're going to right click on that one. We're going to come to our temporary block and we're just going to click on that one as well. And to keep things pretty, we're going to take away that temporary block and we're just going to pop down another linear chassis. And we can get rid of those temporary blocks as well. Now to make sure everything glued up correctly, we're just going to take a redstone torch, we're going to pop it down next to our assembler, make sure all of those blocks got picked up, they did, everything is glued correctly. Again, super glue in the offhand, we're going to take some barrels and we're just going to pop two of those down on the back of our machine. And lastly, we're going to pop down our portable storage interface right here. You do need to crouch because it is a barrel, but as long as it is facing to the right, we are good. Next up, we're going to tackle the unloading mechanism and then we're going to plant ourselves a field. So right in the corner, we're going to pop down a temporary block and then on top, we're going to pop down our storage interface. Then we're just going to make a small belt coming away from our interface and on that interface, we're just going to pop in a brass funnel. Then all you need to do is hook up that belt to some rotational power, make sure it is spinning in the correct direction. And since belts use no stress units, you can crank that speed up to maximum. And then the final part of unloading is we need these items to actually go somewhere. So we're going to take an item vault and we're just going to pop this on the end here. We're going to make it a nice and big three by three and we're actually going to make it two blocks thick. And again, we're just going to pop a brass funnel on the end. Next up, we're going to take some powered rail and we're going to run our machine into our chunk. On the first and second block, we are going to add in some powered rail. On the third block, we're going to add in a regular rail and then we're just going to run powered rail all the way down to the end. However, right at the end, we need to just put down any kind of building block. Now, underneath this powered rail here, right next to our rail, we're going to break underneath. And right on the bottom, we're going to pop down a redstone link. We're going to make sure it is in receiving mode. And I'm just going to use the filters as wheat and wheat. And then anywhere in our world, we're just going to pop down a redstone link with the wheat and the wheat. Because if we were to power this, then we'd see that those powered rails are actually activated. And essentially, this is going to be our on and off switch. Oh, and of course, we can't forget we need to power this rail as well. And now it's finally time to build our farmland. Now, you could really build this however you want. However, I'm going to show you how to farm all of the crops. However, if you just need wheat, then plant an entire wheat field. If you just need sugarcane, you can just plant an entire thing of sugarcane. So starting with sugarcane, coming to the opposite side of our interface now, we're going to pop down a water source on the second block. Then on this block here, we're going to put down some more water sources. And what this allows us to do is make the maximum amount of space for sugarcane along here. And that means we're going to have three rows of sugarcane all the way down. 
like so. Now we're going to work on the farmland, however, we're also going to need to add in some water sources in this farmland, that way things can stay hydrated. So from the first water source that we popped down, we're going to go one block, two block, three block, four blocks. We would need to put a water source in here. However, since we're doing a full chunk, we actually need to go from this block, we need to go one, two, three, and four. And on the fifth block, we need to put in our very first water source. What that means is now we are hydrated all the way across here. Then from that water source, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. On the ninth block, we need to pop in another water source. Now, since we still got six blocks over here, we do need to add in two more water sources. So directly to the right of this water source, we're going to add in one here. And we're going to come all the way down. We're going to add another one in there. And all we need to do is take our hoe and we need to till all of this grass. Now I did mention that I want to actually plant sweet berries in this farm as well. So right next to our sugarcane, I've left a grass area and this is where we're just going to pop down all of our sweet berries. Now again, you can set this up however you want, whatever your needs require, but for simplicity's sake, we can just go for one, two, three of the wheat, we can go for two of the carrots, another two for beetroot, and then two for potato. And then all we need to do is bring that all the way down our farm. And there we go, my friends, we're just about ready to give it a test. However, there is one slight modification that we need to make. Since we are doing sugarcane and we know where it's actually going to be planted now, we need to change where our mechanical harvesters are. So we're not going to have these running along the floor anymore. Instead, with our super glue in our hands, we're going to pop them onto the middle block right here. So for now, we're just going to give it some permanent redstone power. Then we need to go ahead and power our contraption over here. Again, this is a good place to test to make sure that everything gets picked up. It does wonderful. And then all we need to do is make sure that we've got our building block on us because when the minecart goes over this block here, we're going to need to break it and pop down a stone brick. So why don't we give this a bit of a push now? We're going to break that block and pop down a building block. And there we go, my friends. Our machine is farming for us and everything is getting put into our item vault. Happy days, my friends. So if you did enjoy yourself, then be sure to hit that subscribe button as you are not going to want to miss the next episode. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye, guys.